time folds back on itself. Again, his senses scream as the very impossibility of what is happening assaults them. But the Champion of Light endures. Each time he gets a little closer, each time another detail falls into place. Now the trap works against the Herald of Darkness. Anderson, old gods of Asgard. I still don't quite know what to make of them. I know they used to be rock stars who modeled their stage personas after Norse gods. I know they're old. I know that in their day they fought the darkness as I do. I know they're demented and insane, ravaged by age and self-abuse. But there's something in them, something powerful that took hold when they were touched by the powers beyond, a thing that goes far beyond just stage names. Something godlike. Right on cue, bubbling to the surface from untold depths. The horrors come. The emerging monsters do not expect the warm reception that has already been prepared for them. The Anderson brothers should probably have been in a facility somewhere, despite their tendency to escape from such places. It could be argued that they had no business being on tour, considering their condition. Their lives mostly revolved around the laundry list of ailments and their endless quest for liquor. But Barry Wheeler managed them now. And whatever else they might say about Barry, he knew how to make things happen. And honestly, it wasn't like the Andersons were the most difficult clients he ever had. Getting the Andersons into the recording studio was a struggle and a half. But once they actually picked up the instruments, something happened. They were two old men, and they weren't. They were doddering bags of bone, and they were barely contained power. And there was music. 
Barry rubbed his hands together. He knew how to pick a winner. Now all they needed was some direction on how to make things a little more modern. Barry had never produced a thing in his life, but he knew what he liked. He knew Balance Slays the Demon was going to be a hit. Wake, is, is that you? I set everything up for you at the oil field. Thanks. Just checking on you. Emma wasn't sure exactly when the man arrived at the motel, but from what she could tell, the party started almost immediately. It was infectious, spreading from one room to another. He was mercurial, almost as if he was flickering through the scene, telling a joke here, throwing an insult there, oozing sex and violence and excitement. She had never seen someone like this before. He looked at her and smiled, and she felt her heart flutter a little. She knew he was the kind of man mothers warn their daughters about but she told herself it didn't matter. So I've been thinking about Barry. I don't know what to do about him yet. I mean, I'm not gonna keep him around, that's for sure. Al, Al, ugh, little parasite. Your best friend, really. That's the best you can do. I actually kind of like the guy. He's a plucky little butterball. He plays the clown. That's a hard road to take. <laughs> but I don't need him sticking his fat face in my business. <sighs> Did you know he's been hanging out with the sheriff? from that shitty little town. They keep in touch. Barry's about the only guy who insists that you're not dead. How about that? <sighs> I might keep him alive for a while. <laughs> Just to see him go to pieces when I fire his ass. <laughs> yeah. 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 I have seen the darkness twist flesh into new shapes before, but encountering these giants is an extremely disturbing experience. It's as if the genre has been switched on me. There's something out of Pulp Fiction, twice as tall as normal men and stronger than forklifts. Their lumbering gait and slow-witted demeanor brings to mind some kind of mean-spirited caricature of a feeble-minded hillbilly. lovers, are you feeling neglected? You shouldn't. You know Eddie Rodman's got love for you, which is why I actually hauled myself out of bed before noon, just so I could record an interview for your pleasure. Enjoy. Now, as I'm sure you all know, the annual Night Springs visual art show is coming around again, and that's a big deal for all of us that are in the culture business. If you can call it a business, that's a little controversial, I know. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Money makes the world go around, no doubt about it. <laughs> and that's one of my guests here at the studio, Serena Valdivia. She's a curator at the Night Springs Gallery of Visual Arts, and she's in charge of the NSVA Film Festival, held this year at the old Night Springs Drive-In Theater. Hello, Eddie. It's great to be here. And let me just say that it's a wonderful venue. Absolutely. And with her is one of the filmmakers, somebody who's actually primarily known as a renowned photographer, Alice Wake. Hello. Now, Alice, I've seen a lot of your work over the years. It's very impressive. 
Uh, my wife's a big fan, actually. Oh, thank you. You've uh, you've gained quite a bit of fame as a photographer, but that's not why you're here, right? You actually have a film. That's a little surprising. For me, too. I really wouldn't be here at all if it weren't for Serena. Uh, you two are friends, I take it? Yeah, we move in the same circles. So about a year ago, I heard about all this footage she'd shot, and I got to see some of it, and then I started pestering her about actually putting it out there, because it was really good. I didn't really want to show it. It felt too personal. Well, yes, I can understand that. It, it, uh, it features your husband, and he's, um, well... Uh, he's... he's dead. Uh, I, I thought he was missing. It's been two years. I... this sounds awful, but yes, I believe he's dead. Otherwise, he would have... well, you know. Yeah, I, I understand. Well, hold that thought, and uh, we'll be right back. Saving Emma.
Yeah, thanks for saving me again. I'd hate to die before I'm scheduled to be murdered. I guess I have you to thank for setting everything up at the oil derrick. Yeah, well, I figured that if we were going to go over this again, we might as well try to be smart about it, huh? I appreciate it. You took a big chance doing that. Are you okay? What do you think? I've died twice. I remember everything pretty clearly now. You said I was gonna be okay. I don't know what happened. Well, it's not your fault. I think one of those, what did you call them? The, the takers? I think they did something to the power and they got me that way. I'm sorry. But I got the keys from the dead guy in that room. And I'm not handing them over until you do something about this. I'm sick of getting killed. Fair enough. You seem calmer now. I tried freaking out. Didn't do much good for me. I guess you get used to the craziest stuff. Good for you. Plus, I figured I'd take the edge off, you know? Mm-hmm. Those herbal supplements are pretty good, huh? Oh, yeah. I wanted to try to explain things to you now, since you're calmer, but maybe this isn't the best time after all. Oh, shit. Yeah. Better not get all metaphysical on me now. Seriously, I'm like two sentences away from thinking how we could all be like atoms on God's skin or something. Or figments of somebody's imagination? Um, wow. Uh, I'm just gonna try to chill out and not think about that or, or getting murdered or anything, if you're cool with that. Gotcha. Okay. I really don't think they can get to the power now. Thank you. That's a relief. Um, here's the keys that you needed. Thank you. Hey, I have to tell you. At the diner, I went there with him. The guy who looks like you, okay? I know I said that I didn't. Yeah, I figured. Want to talk about what happened at the diner? There was this guy from the observatory, and... He just attacked the poor dude, smashed his face into the tabletop a bunch of times. It was horrible. I... I didn't know that he was gonna do that. I swear. And I just ran. I just left him there. I didn't even try to help. There was nothing you could have done. It's not your fault. Well, he's dead in that motel room now, so excuse me if I feel pretty shitty about it anyway. You shouldn't blame yourself. I just didn't want to get involved. I have this tendency to just drop everything and run. I don't think I'm a bad person, but I... I didn't even call the cops. I'm such a coward. If you'd called the cops, we'd have dead cops. He's not human. Do you understand? It's not your fault. But I could have tried to stop him. Believe me, if you had, you'd be dead. You seem to be doing a little better now. Yeah, I guess it just got easier once I got this thing off my chest. I just feel so guilty about it, especially because I didn't pick up on any of the warning signs. I just really liked hanging out with him, you know? He was smart and charming and funny and hot. The way you could be, I guess. I guess. What's the deal with this guy anyway? He looks like you, he uses your name. Why does he do this stuff? I'm not sure myself. Maybe he's just evil or my dark half. He does a lot of the stuff I'm trying really hard to get away from. Things that just messed up my life. I guess all those murders don't help either. Yeah, I could do without the murders in the end of the world. Listen, I need to get going. Yeah, go. I think I'm good now. I hope. Good luck. If it all goes well, maybe this is the last time we meet like this. God, wouldn't that be great? Just keep those lights on, okay?
The fate of countless individuals hangs in the balance, threatened by the machinations of the Herald of Darkness. And yet, for a moment, the Champion of Light breathes a little easier. He has saved one life. For this moment, it is enough. And soon, perhaps, he can put an end to this. Returning to the observatory for what he hopes is the final time, the man feels anticipation and dread in equal measure. Soon, he knows he will have what he needs. Hello, I was expecting you. I've already taken care of the imaging array, but you should still look into securing the primary coolant flow. With some luck, you may be able to light the area before these things even show up. second part of our interview with Serena Valdivia and award-winning photographer Alice Wake. Now, Alice, we were talking about your husband, Alan Wake. Uh, is that a sore subject for you? Well, a little bit. Of course it is. The way I see it, we had our good times and our bad times, and on the whole, we had a lot of good times. He really made me happy. I don't mind being reminded of him. So you're, uh, you're over him? <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever be that, entirely. I still think about him every day, literally. I still find myself hoping for, well, sometimes I think I see him just standing somewhere, watching me. I think most people who lose someone they love experience things like that. But on the whole, I'm doing all right. Two years is a long time to adjust, and I'm not really the type to wallow in the negative. Well, I know there are a lot of stories about Alan. He seemed to have something of a wild streak. Um, that's not really what our show is about, though. Look, all that stuff really gets blown out of proportion. He had his problems, but it's really frustrating for me because people like to talk. They love to tell these crazy stories, and they never really knew him at all. Well, the character he created, uh, Alex Casey, is a household name. Uh, the books still continue to sell. There's been talk of a TV series, a movie, a video game. Must be nice to know that his work is still being appreciated by so many readers. Yes, of course, but I don't really deal with the business side. I leave that to Alan's agent. Oh, uh, that would be Barry Wheeler. Actually, I just interviewed him. Uh, he's currently in the music business. Mm-hmm. And he's also Alan's best friend. Uh, do you two keep in touch? Or? We talk regularly. Like I said, he handles the business side. I think we should talk about her film. Yes, yes, of course, you're right. I'm Eddie Rodman, talking to Alice Wake and Serena Valdivia, and we'll be right back.
This act of creation is exhilarating and frightening. Subtext and symbols loom eager to take effect. Causality and consequence become domino chains that stretch into infinity. The more fundamental the change, the more unpredictable the variables become. Reality is too complex to control completely. Ordinary questions become meaningless. Who created who? What is really real? Everything is as real as everything else. You learn to let go of the things you can't control and go with the flow or go insane. I believe we're ready to look into the sky. You're right there, Doctor.
The man before Dr. Meadows was handsome and slick. He moved with lazy confidence and didn't bother to pretend that he wasn't staring at her. She didn't mind, at first. Then the man flicked open the knife and shoved her out of the control room so she wouldn't hear the signal, whatever it was. Outside, she pulled her lab coat closed and thought about running. She didn't. She didn't think she'd get very far. Not from him. She never was entirely sure why he spared her. The film noir poster reminded me of Alex Casey, the detective's cool exterior never cracking even with the gun pointed in his face. In the back room, all the lights had been turned off, except for the lone spotlight which illuminated the bright red fire extinguisher on the wall. This is what you look like. Does that bother you? I bet it does. I'm not just wearing your face, you know. It goes a lot deeper than that. There's a lot of you in me. All the best parts. At first, I was just an idea. But they kept telling all those stories about you. You already had that rep. And then you disappeared mysteriously. And then the stories about bad, crazy Alan Wake came true. And here I am. That's the best part, isn't it? When that happens, you can always count on Cauldron Lake. <sighs> I'm just as real as you are. And I'm the improved version. No fears, no doubt, no weaknesses, no self-deception here. I don't let anything drag me down. I know you like I know myself. I know it bothers you that I'm like this, that I use your name, crawl my way into your life. But I only do it because I'm better at being you than you ever were.
wish these things would stop blatantly violating the laws of physics in my observatory. That's just rude. Are you all right? I'll live. I'm glad. I'll send the lift down to you. I remember our previous encounters very clearly now. But technically, if this really is a loop in time, we've never met before. I don't know why our awareness persists, but it's bloody fascinating. Doctor? You know, I know physicists who would give 15 years of their lives for a chance to experience something like this. I'd imagine that being stalked by horrible axe murderers would curb their enthusiasm a little. Clearly you've never met hardcore physicists. I'm glad you're in such good spirits, but- the signal! Yes, it's completed! Finally! If all goes well, this should be the last time we go through the loop. You know, I just realized that I don't have any memory of what happens after you leave. What does that mean? I don't think it means anything. If everything goes well, you just keep going. I don't show up here like this again, no more bad guys, things go back to normal. Let's hope you're right. I'd love the opportunity to look into this in more detail. Looks like you've accepted the situation. I'm a pragmatist. If this is a delusion, at least my first psychotic episode is anything but boring. Really, Mr. Wake, at the end of the day, I'm a scientist. I love mysteries. I love not knowing. Whatever else this might be, it's absolutely fascinating. I wonder how far this reaches. Is everybody in the world experiencing this? Who knows? I think reality is probably pretty fragile right now. Doctor, I can see you're very enthusiastic about this. I'd appreciate a bit of discretion. Are you suggesting that we should suppress this? No. You can do what you like, but I want you to leave me out of it. But surely, with the things you know, the things you've experienced, you can replicate any of these results. We could- Let me be blunt. If you drag me into this, I'll deny everything. I'll lie like my life depended on it. And writers are damn good liars. Word of advice. This is things man was not meant to know territory. You get into this, chances are you'll open up a door into a world of hurt. Believe me, I know. I see. In a strange way, he feels at ease. He is armed with his own words, and when the time comes, they will be enough or they will not. For now, he's content to let the currents take him toward the final confrontation. Once more, we return to the drive-in. If he's aware of the absurdity of arming oneself with a few sentences and standing against a power that can pierce time itself, he doesn't show it. The man has his share of weaknesses, perhaps more, but cowardice is not among them. Do you? Once more, we return to the drive-in. If he's aware of the absurdity of arming oneself with a few sentences and standing against a power that can pierce time itself, he doesn't show it. The man has his share of weaknesses, perhaps more, but cowardice is not among them. <laughs> oh, you got yourself a little plan, do you?
never getting out of this, Wake. Never! Don't worry. I'll take care of your wife and your life. you're doing, but I'll send you right back to the beginning. When the dark man's eyes suddenly locked into Serena's, she flushed hot. They ignited a black fire in her. He was talking. He wanted the power turned off. He said something about the projector booth. She hooked a finger under his belt buckle. He grabbed a hold of her throat and twisted until it hurt. Somewhere deep inside, a part of her screamed in paralyzed horror. But the moan that escaped from her throat had no panic in it. Pay attention, he said. Business first. His eyes glittered shamelessly. Hers did too. I'd found her film from the pile of containers in the back. I'd threaded it into the projector. I swallowed hard, staring at the screen, hearing her voice, the sunrise I remembered so well only moments away. And then Mr. <laughs> was there, nailed by the projector's beam, caught in his own trap. He shouted at me. First in confusion, then rage. And then the sun came up and things started to burn. What? You think whatever it is you're gonna do is gonna make a difference? This'll end up just like before! There's more to fighting the Taken than just burning away the darkness that protects them. When I'm fighting for my life, I find myself slipping into a state of intense concentration that makes the beam of my flashlight seem more powerful and focused. I used to think it was just my imagination, something brought on by the adrenaline and fear of death, but now I'm not so sure. I've been touched by powers that I can't begin to truly comprehend, and they've left a mark. I'm starting to think this might be a part of it. I've been around for a while now, you know? While well, you've been indisposed, stuck in the darkness, I've been busy. I agree. With you. They don't mind. 
getting a little bit of elbow room? All that chaos and madness, it doesn't really do that much down there. It's like pouring a glass of water into the ocean, right? But up here? Yeah, you can really make an impact. All they need is someone to bring them all the way through. But first, I had to take care of you, you party pooper. You're stuck in an eternal cycle now. The sun's never coming up for you. Everything else? Do my thing? Get a bit of quality time with Alice? <laughs> That's a little something for me. And I deserve it. I held the film canister in my hands. I saw her name written across it in big letters, followed by the title. It was a time capsule, moments snatched from times gone by, from a past that I hoped could also be our future. It was my salvation, our salvation, our chance to be together. A tin can with a bit of magic in it that she didn't even know about, something I could put to good use. There were only moments left before I had to face him. The clothes I wear now I shaped from dreams and memories. It's an old outfit originally from the 90s. The last time I wore it was when I was still riding and Alice and I took a vacation in the desert before our troubles began. The night before, we'd been at a party, 
and I dressed to the nines. On that lazy day, I put on these old clothes, worn and comfortable. Alice made a joke about grunge. I felt a little embarrassed, but I stuck with them. We were very happy. I'm sheathed in good memories to remind myself of what is at stake. I'm hoping I can put an end to this now. You'd better. I really don't want that to happen to me again. It's like somebody vomited in my brain, like a sleazy movie that keeps looping in my head. I'll stop this, I swear. You know the part that's really screwed up? If you mess it up, it'll just keep happening forever, right? I don't think I can deal with that. Don't think about that. I don't think of anything but. Hey, afterwards, when all this is done, look me up. This thing, I can probably help you deal with it. I don't know. It's almost like I'm not even in the same world anymore. Everything's just weird now. Yeah, I know. A lot of that'll pass with time. But being touched by the darkness, it's rough on you. It's a lot to process. And I just don't want you to get completely screwed up by this. Might be a little late for that, to be honest. Yeah, well, there's degrees. At least you're not at a point where you go around picking fights with people over not changing their light bulbs often enough. What? Never mind. All I'm saying is, you're not alone with this. In any way, you're friends with Alice, so, you know, any friend of hers. Thank you. pre-recorded interview with Serena Valdivia and renowned photographer Alice Wake. So, uh, tell me about the film. It's called Sunrise, and it really wasn't something I ever thought of as an actual film. It was just footage, things I saw and happened to shoot. It's not a medium I'm very much at home with. You shouldn't put yourself down. You've got a great eye. Maybe, but experience is another thing. Because you're primarily a still photographer. Yes, exactly. So I'm really used to thinking of the world in terms of snapshots. I frame something and try to pick the right moment, and then reveal that moment to people. Moving images are a different story. I'm still learning a lot about it, to be honest. So, this is a new thing for you? <laughs> or maybe I'm just a slow learner. But showing it like this is definitely a new step for me. It's a little weird taking something this intimate and showing it to everybody. Not that the material itself is somehow shocking. It's just that those were private moments. But that's why it works, because it feels genuine. It's not so much a story as it is a sort of an echo, showing us how you saw your husband at the time. It's not really about the sunrise itself or Alan watching it. It's about you two together, I suppose. It's funny looking at it now, especially now that it's been edited like that. It takes on a life of its own almost. It's a kind of a fantasy. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. No, you're right. I'm glad you talked me into it.
Again, the Champion of Light enters the final trap. The new reality is almost here. All he needs to do is change the details of the scene, push it past the breaking point, and the rest will snap into place. actual events or merely a dream, a memory or a glimpse of what is to come. One thing is certain. This scene takes place in another time and another place far, far away from Night Springs. <laughs> 